All right, let's start then. Uh, me and Tom here are, uh, well, we've come here to tell you about Shapeshifter, a project that we've both been working on. For me, it's been, uh, I think the first time I got in contact with it was five years ago. I think for Tom it's one or two. Uh, well, this is us. Uh, I work as a freelancer. I actually used to work at Oleander, uh, <laughs> where we, uh, we just saw the presentation from, uh, and I'm freelancing right now. And uh, well, Tom, uh, just as me, is a member of the TSC, so the Technical Steering Committee of this project, and uh, we're here to tell you something about it. Ah, that's some technical issues. Uh, we're back. Uh, this is not great. Uh, anyway. Uh, the problem we're trying to, I'm going to talk to you about the problem we're trying to solve. Uh, yeah, what, what Shapeshifter is, uh, how does it work, and also how to use it. Uh, I do hope the screen will get back to us. Uh, right, so it's funny, actually, uh, <laughs> part of the slide you saw, uh, you saw uh, just, uh, just now. Uh, it's actually fun to see the trend here because uh, just two years ago we had some areas where there were issues with congestion on our grid uh, and right now it's almost impossible to get anything going, uh, yeah, really, uh, to, to get your data center up or get your solar panels up. It's just almost impossible. Um, where the previous presentation was about forecasting, we're actually on the other end of uh, things. Um, with the trends that she talked about, uh, well, uh, production and consumption is getting more uh, simultaneous, it's getting less centralized, uh, a lot of electrification. Uh, this means uh, we're slowly getting into issues. So how does it look like if you draw it in a graph? Uh, this used to be our case, well, quite simple. Uh, we expected uh, use up until the green line. Uh, capacity was black and actually uh, the grid companies oversold their capacity a little bit because, uh, well, uh, it's not usually used for the whole thing. Uh, well. <coughs> really annoying. Sorry for this. Pull out clicker, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's strange it shows up on the second screen there, but apparently the beamer's not very happy with it. All right. <laughs> Almost back. Um, so it still wasn't that bad yet. Uh, I'm going to stand on this side so I can at least click on the laptop. Uh, at some point, uh, it got so bad, uh, our grid capacity is uh, reached. And, well, if this happens, uh, two things uh, might happen. Either um, your transformer is sort of overloaded, but it will keep working. If you do it too often, what then happens is it will blow up or it will uh, really, really shorten its lifespan by a lot. So... Uh, we try to prevent it from happening. Um, as was, uh, yeah, what, what, we can also fix this problem by making sure it doesn't go over this peak anymore. Um, how we do this, uh, I'm just going to try and explain it without the screen. Uh, there's some major uh, users on the net, uh, let's say, uh, above one megawatt uh, for their connection um, that actually have some influence on when their energy is used. So if they, uh, yeah, let's say uh, a giant uh, freezer or uh, they've got a battery somewhere stored, to them it doesn't really matter in case of the freezer, for example, the temperature needs to be between minus 25 and minus 20. Uh, so this means that if you don't use power at the peak, you can make sure that it's fixed uh, oh, we're going to try a different approach for the screen. Give them uh, two minutes, maybe. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so uh, really any major company uh, in the beginning, it used to be voluntary, uh, but at some point, uh, yeah, problems are getting bigger and bigger, so we're getting into uh, a state where it's actually allowed by Dutch law to force certain companies to comply with these rules uh, to make sure that we're not having blackouts and, uh, well, that the grid is saved. Um, He's working on it. Yeah. We, 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 we've got a second uh, screen. We're back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. It was kind of stressful. Um, so actually, the, the previous presentation, the open step, uh, this was really about creating insight. Uh, where's your problem? When is your problem? How big is your problem? Uh, that only, uh, so, so the insight is just creating the graphs. Uh, you can identify problems by having your experts at your company determine, okay, at which points, how much load can our transformers handle? How much can our cables handle? Uh, so once you have that, you can no, okay, so these are risky areas because we see in our forecasts or in our measurements that we're nearing our limits in certain cases. Uh, third one is really an interesting one. You can choose a solution because um, in the grid there's, well, not, not hundreds, but at least tens of possibilities to alleviate uh, the pressure on your grid. And uh, Shapeshifter, which we're talking about here, is one of them which is in the market-based uh, direction of solutions. Um, Tom will tell a bit more about uh, the contents of uh, Shapeshifter itself. Uh, of course, you need to activate a solution once you've chosen it. Uh, and the last part is actually kind of interesting too. Uh, if companies are saying that they've decreased their use, how do you actually determine that that's true? Because usually uh, power use is not, is not uh, stable anyway, so uh, how do you know they've kept their promises? Uh, well, that's where Shapeshifter comes in. I hope you don't mind if I talk about this one. Um, it was founded in 2014, uh, well, uh, by a couple of uh, grid operators, but also IT companies and consultants, uh, because it was a very uh, yeah, common problem in Europe altogether, but it was started in uh, the Netherlands because uh, we've got a very, uh, very stable power grid and we like to keep it that way. Uh, <laughs> So that's where the, the, the need came from. Uh, it's actually uh, put into practice by the uh, Dutch DSOs. I worked on the first pilot project uh, where we actually made sure that uh, we didn't have to put in a temporary cable uh, which would have cost two million euros uh, for just three years because that was when the new transformer would have been in place. Uh, so it was a very nice project to work on. Um, the, USEF standard, that's the Universal Smart Energy Framework, has been updated a couple of times. In the meantime, it was relabeled to Universal Flex Trading Protocol, but that conflicted with UFTP, FTP, that was kind of uh, <laughs> annoying, so it was renamed to Shapeshifter, and hopefully we'll keep it that way for a little bit. Uh, and I think uh, now it's Tom's turn to talk about uh, what it does, or should I still take yeah. this one? I'll, I'll, I'll I'll go into this one again. Um, so in the grid, there's a lot of roles defined, and the Universal Smart Energy Framework actually defines all these roles. The most important ones here for Shapeshifter uh, are the DSOs, aggregators, and prosumers. Um, aggregators are companies that usually uh, provide some form of IT where they uh, can trade on behalf of companies, well, prosumers or consumers or companies that actually have the physical flexibility, uh, but the aggregator will be the party that's participating in the flex trading protocol. Um, it's possible that those two are the same. Uh, it's not necessary that roles are separated. It might be that a prosumer actually takes on the aggregator role because they're big enough to just be a party in this flex trading protocol. Um, the DSOs and TSOs are the parties that really send out the request, the flex request that uh, Tom will probably talk about uh, to, into the market. Uh, all the aggregators will have time to respond to the request, okay, apparently 
uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, until 7 p.m. Uh, there's uh, congestion on the uh, production side, so uh, please, if you uh, can use extra power during that time in a certain region, uh, we will actually pay you for it. Uh, that's an example uh, situation that you can uh, handle with Shapeshifter. Um, so some typical uh, flex applications, uh, solar parks, talked about them, wind parks, freezers. I think that's a very interesting one. It, I, I'm not even sure if it has been done before to actually use a giant freezer as an energy storage for uh, grid stabilization. So I thought it was a very cool use case. Uh, well, farms with solar, close to the solar parks, of course. Uh, steel mills, as they are major energy users and not necessarily time-specific in when they do so. Uh, and, uh, yeah, really, uh, in most of our early projects, we talked with greenhouses a lot because they have both large electricity connections and gas connections. Uh, so they can switch really easily or can even uh, provide power back to the grid if they need to. So they're very nice from a flexibility perspective. Then I'll uh, <laughs> hand it over to my colleague, Tom. Yeah, so in the time remaining... Um the Shapeshifter project, it consists of a uh, specification, which is uh, published on uh, GitHub, so uh, yeah, you can uh, scan the QR if you want. Um, the specification is wa the one hand of the project, the other part is the uh, XML schemas, which are defined along with it. We are uh, organized using a st technical steering committee. Uh, we are part of the committee and also a couple of members from the uh, UK DSOs and also from the Dutch DSOs. There are also two Shapeshifter implementations already. Uh, there is a Java library, which is in use by Aliander, and also uh, at Gopax, which is the congestion uh, yeah, platform we are using in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, and there is a Python implementation, which is used by another uh, DSO. Everything is uh, published under the uh, Apache 2 license. Um, we're currently focusing on improving our processes, our, our quality uh, control, etc., to meet uh, the OpenSSF best practices and they were part of the uh, LF Energy uh, Initiative. I will skip this for now. So we have a couple of implementations already uh, uh, that are using Shapeshifter. There was a uh, demonstration project in the UK called Fusion. Good uh, result from that. As I said, GoPax in the Netherlands. Uh, there are also some congestion service providers which are also implementing Shapeshifter on their end, so those are the, the, the CSP aggregator type of uh, parties, uh, and of course the grid operators themselves are using it to uh, facilitate trading of flexibility using, uh, using Shapeshifter. Skip this for now. Um, just one, one simple example of a, uh, what the protocol looks like. It's an XML-based protocol where the DSO can, uh, can indicate what flexibility is required on the uh, prosumer side uh, on which the um, the prosumer can reply with one or more offers that they will be able to offer some flexibility to the grid operator and the grid operator can then in turn reply to this message and say, okay, I want to use your flexibility during these hours to solve a specific congestion problem. One minute left. Um, current challenges we have with the project, uh, we're trying to uh, get as much of the prosumers involved as we can. So one of the challenges is that we have to really keep a low entry barrier uh, for these parties to connect using Shapeshifter. So one of the things is security is, of course, a very important topic. How can we keep it secure but also keep the barrier really low for uh, entering into this type of uh, integrations? Um, and the other thing is uh, yeah, we need more contributors. So that's uh, pretty much a story for every open source project. But, uh, yeah, there are different ways you can contribute. So if you find this interesting... Please take a look at our GitHub uh, and see if you can improve one, one of these uh, items, for example. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Any questions? I see one in the back. Oh, there's no, there's no time. Sorry. Yeah, d just come to the front and then uh, take your question. Give rest, please. Talk with them.